Welcome to Banana Mars. Give it up for one of my favorite alliterations, Jay Jordan. Hello. Hey, happy Black History Month. Yeah, I know it's not February, but I didn't come up with the stereotype. Also, if you celebrated Black History Month, I want to thank you. If you did not celebrate Black History Month, you might want to change the channel, like right now. You might even want to turn the TV off, but I have bad news. When you turn the TV off, the screen will still be black. I'm very happy to be here. I feel like I've come full circle. This time last year, I was on TV, and this year I am on my boyfriend's last nerve. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'm on TV. I'm on daytime TV. I'm very happy to be a guy on daytime TV and not have to worry about a paternity test. This is nice. I'm a millennial. Don't get too excited. That's just a fancy word for 30. Yeah, I'm a millennial, and people used to make fun of us. They used to say, oh, I'm sick of these millennials in high school. Millennials, we aren't in school. We are in debt. We are in therapy. We are in debt because of therapy, or we're in therapy because of the way that our debt makes us feel. I mean, on the one hand, we want to be happy, but in the other hand, we have our phones. It's rough. I don't even like that term. Millennial, that's my generational cohort, is because we grew up during the millennium. I don't know if I like being named after a Backstreet Boys album, right? I don't know if I want it that way. And tell me why the generations after us got such cool nicknames. You got Gen Z, don't make fun of me. You got Gen Alpha, then Gen Omega, because that's when the world ends. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> doesn't work. And before us, you had Generation X, and before them, you had the Baby Boomers, and before them, you had the Silent Generation, which was named after the way that our great-grandparents had sex. <laughs> Just a whole lot of... Was it good for you, Evelyn? It was good for me, Ernest. <laughs> I can make fun of older people because the pandemic has turned me into one. I've definitely aged during the pandemic. You can't tell because black don't crack, but it also don't like being locked up. I am at that age where some of my friends don't know their dads, but also some of my friends don't know that they're dads, right? <laughs> I am I'm old enough that I look pretty good in a robe. <laughs> Does that track? Like when you're 10 and you wear a robe, people say, oh, look at him, he thinks he's a grown up. When you're 20 and you wear a robe, people say, oh, what frat are you in? At my age, people see me in a robe and they just say, we will keep the music down, Mr. Jordan. We understand, it's late. I'm like, yeah, it's 9.30. That's a lot of commotion y'all are keeping up. I'm old enough to use the word commotion correctly, but I'm not old enough to enjoy baseball. I'm not there yet. The other day, I could tell I was getting older because I walked outside, I saw a group of kids outside of my building, and the first thing I said was, young man, what are you doing? Pull your mask up, you look ridiculous. Do you know what that means in prison? Now, I like the kids, I like the youths. I think they're doing a lot of stuff right. They know about all these different activisms and uh, being socially aware. They know about intersectionality. So if you don't know intersectionality, that's when you hook up with someone at a four-way stop. Now, intersectionality, that is when you are more than one thing at once, like me, I'm black and I'm queer, or as the previous administration called it, two strikes, maybe I do <laughs> like baseball. Uh, but being black and queer, it's interesting because it means that sometimes when white women see me, they instinctively clutch their purse, but they have to compliment mine. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Jay Jordan. Wowza, wowza, wowza. That Jay Jordan knows how to work a crowd.